Hey, it's uh, Rick Probst, and this is Faith Talk Live, and I'm with... Dan Ratcliffe. And Jess Morgan. I know I threw you guys a curve. I don't usually open like that, but I was... Really seeing, caught me off guard. I yeah. was feeling over the edge because David Windicher is our guest today, as you can see on Zoom and listening on the radio. Uh, David, of course, uh, a father, husband, lawyer, and uh, also the founder of Red and an author, and pretty soon maybe his story uh, on the on the big screen. David, how are you? I'm doing great. It's nice to be back with you guys, sort of, remotely, um, <laughs> quarantined. But yeah. um, things are great on my end. It's nice to see you guys. It's nice to meet Jess. Um, I'm excited to catch up with you guys. It's been quite a while. It's been a few months. Yeah, you're looking good. Uh, since I think uh, we've talked last, you, you and Emily uh, had Mateo. Mateo's growing like a little weed, as we see on Facebook. And and other social social media venues. First of all, before we get into all the other stuff, what's it like for you now being a dad? Uh, it's the best thing in the world. I don't know if you can tell. I feel like I can't stop smiling. It's been six <laughs> months since he was born, and um, I'm, I'm very fortunate. I was able to create the situation I wanted for a family, and I have my flexible schedule. I get to be home in the mornings when he's the sweetest after he slept. Um, it's just a lot of fun. Uh, I waited the right amount of time, I think, and uh, we're really enjoying it. Our Emily is such a great mom and a great wife, and we're just having a, it's a blast. And being quarantined doesn't feel that difficult because we get to be home together. It's got a lot of fun. Now, as you can see, uh, all of us are in our studios at home. We are, are socially isolated, which seems to be one of the terms that we're all using now uh, mm -hmm. here during this pandemic 2020. Uh, ha have you had any friends that are isolated because they're ill? How's family, friends, et cetera? As a matter of fact, um, it's hit pretty close to home. We had the secretary for Red, um, her sister apparently has it. And um, I don't know if you guys have been following some of the AJC articles regarding the Cab County Clerk's Office, but we lost, um, we lost Ms. Stevens. And um, it's really unfortunate because um, she was great. You know, it, it's just really sad. It's unfortunate. Mm. Mm. Tell us Our how uh, this has been affecting Red at all. Is it affecting Red and what you guys are doing? Well, yes, it definitely has affected us because we gather as a group in court um, with our program participants regularly. And now that's going to be shut down for the foreseeable future. You know, they're saying that things may pick up on April 13th, but I, I frankly don't see that happening. And, um, you know, the connections between the program participants, the mentees and the mentors is completely disconnected. Now, the only way that they can communicate is through video or through text message. Um, we were trying to do the best to promote doing our part to flatten the curve. Mm. We're talking yes. with David Wendicher. Uh, he is the founder of Red and uh, also an author, father, lawyer, husband. And um, he, he and Emily, we enjoyed every single second of Hunted. Uh, which was, that's been about, what, two years ago, right, David? Yeah, it's going on three, actually, because it aired in January of 2017, right after the uh, the Falcons' NFC Championship game, and um, it ended in March of 2017. But uh, they're still going strong in UK. They picked up the show over there, and um, they're, they're still filming and producing. But, uh, yeah, it feels like yesterday because it was a lot of fun. And, you know, we always joke around how we can never replicate the adrenaline we experienced there. Um, but uh, yeah, about three years now. Our boss, uh, Adam the Beard, Samurai Man by No Socks, just say no, Hollywood uh, Asher. Uh, he's not been the same since his big line, no. No. So we appreciate that so much. But let's, let's talk a little bit about uh, your story now. The last we spoke, uh, they were thinking about making your story, which is amazing, uh, in, into, a, into a film. Catch us up. Right, right. That's this right here. Um, so it's the American dream. Uh, it's his story in the making. It's an autobiography that just talks about my 13 arrests um, stemming from poverty. I was the son of immigrants, Argentinian parents, and we grew up in uh, an environment that was just rampant with poverty. Got arrested at the age of 11 for the first time. Saw my first murder at the age of 13. I got jumped into the Latin King gangs at 14. Dropped out of high school at 16, and by the time I was 19, I had 13 arrests, um, spent eight months incarcerated. I was shot. I was stabbed. Um, it took 15 years from that moment to become an attorney because of my criminal history. I decided to put an autobiography out there because it felt like um, anybody else going through that kind of challenge didn't need to go through all those obstacles to reach their dreams. I, I didn't have a malignant heart. I was just uh, 
I don't want to call myself a victim of circumstances because my circumstances was my catalyst. But, um, you know, it was quite a journey. So I decided to put it in a book. We did okay with, um, you know, on Amazon. It helped us get on the CBS show Hunted because I actually got away from a helicopter as a real life fugitive when I was um, <laughs> 16. <laughs> and, um, you know, so that kind of captivated them a little bit. And here we are now uh, in the middle of finalizing a script on my life story that um, will be produced out of California shortly, hopefully, God willing. Yeah, I was going to ask, you know, is, is with everything going on, is that affecting the filming process at all? Or, you know, have you heard anything on that? Sure. Um, that's a great question. Um, because I, I want to answer that without sounding slightly selfish. The Thank individual you. who is the writer for the script, he's not been laid off, but there's nothing they can do. He's a writer and one of the studios out there in California and, um, he works on NCIS shows. Mm -hmm. So he's just sitting back now and he reached out to me. He's like, you know what, this might've been the best thing that could have happened. And I don't mean that gently I, I mean that you know considering right. the, the harm that people are experiencing but um he's hunkered down and he's working on that script and we're going back and forth every single day talking about it and it's actually helped him to be more present you know he doesn't have other work going on he's just working on that script so i'm excited to see what this looks like we have the first um the first draft will be coming down on april 1st and then we're going to clean it up and uh, hopefully by the end of uh, april we'll be ready to rock and roll David, I know, Dan, you, go, ahead. go ahead, Dan. Uh, David, you were, we were talking before we started the segment and you said that this whole social distancing thing, the virus going on has also created kind of an opportunity for y'all with red because it's, it's bringing to the forefront, being able to be online and doing stuff like that. Tell, tell us about that. Yeah. So, you know, we've been doing restorative justice since 2015 and we call it college in the courtroom. We provide social, civic, financial literacy modules, educational resources to our program participants. And we've been executing it like a, a college style environment, right? And because of the results that we've been producing, there has been a lot of demand. We partner with Google, we partner with the Arthur Blank Foundation, the Atlanta Falcons now. And the goal is to take our program and digitize it, so to speak. We want to create a cloud-based a platform where the curriculum can be accessed by a username and a password and they'll be able to get to this dashboard where all of these modules are going to be available and um given what's happening just the virtual programming advocacy is strong now we now know that we've always known that in order to scale this thing we'd have to get digital and uh, this gives us an opportunity to test the program out and that's what we're going to do we're going to roll it out next month um, in a digital format to reach out to the mentees, the mentors, and all the people attached to our program to test it out and see what it looks like. And, you know, it's unfortunate what everybody's going through being quarantined and people dying, but we want to use this as an opportunity to regroup and um, not necessarily regroup, but just uh, plan, strategize. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're doing now. Awesome. David, when did your, David, give us uh, the way we can stay connected with you, Facebook, Instagram, uh, whatever. Yeah, so my handles are David Winnicher, at David Winnicher. So you can follow me on Instagram, at David Lee. Some of them are David Lee, some of them David Winnicher. I have such a funky name that if you just Google it, it'll probably pop up. <laughs> at David Lee Winnicher is going to give you Google, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all those, uh, they'll pull up. And I think now um, we're starting to use LinkedIn a lot because of the programming. Mm -hmm. David Winditcher, uh, he's amazing. We love having him as a friend and as a guest, of course, for the show. David, our love to Emily, Mateo, and we'd love to get back uh, with you and uh, catch up on uh, all things, uh, you know, your life and what's going on with the film and uh, health of the family, et cetera. Hey, it, listen, it's a super pleasure to be with you guys. Unfortunately, we can't be together, but, um, you know, you guys have been believers in what we've done and supporters of us since before we even published the book. And I admire you guys, respect you guys, and care a lot about you guys. I hope you and your family stay safe. And I look forward to catching up with you guys real, real soon. And David, if you have any toilet paper, let's get together even sooner, okay? Would that be good? I'm price gouging, my man. Get on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm selling it off. We're going to have the attorney general knocking on my door soon. <laughs> David, I'll take care, okay? All right. David, David right. Wimbledon, you're our guest on the show. You can watch it on Zoom. You can hear it on the radio. Thank you so much. And in podcast form, let's take a break. I'm Rick Probst. I'm Dan Ratcliffe. And I'm Just Morgan. This is Faith Talk Live.